in lieu of going over nickel plating in the future, I needed nickel chloride, which we made last time, and this time it's nickel sulfate, also nickel sulfate hexahydrate. A quick review here, nickel was discovered in 1751. Nickel sulfate, nobody knows who did it, much like the nickel chloride, but it was sometime in the early 1800s. Nickel sulfate does occur naturally in a mineral called retkersite. When you put it in water, it disassociates into nickel ions and sulfate ions, pretty straightforward. When you heat nickel sulfate hexahydrate, the first thing you do is lose the six waters, so you have nickel sulfate. If you continue to heat it, you'll get nickel oxide and typically sulfur dioxide, but sometimes sulfur trioxide. Inhaling nickel sulfate dust is classified as a carcinogen, and I drew this little diagram to help you out. That's a nose, those are lips, not so good, but nickel sulfate going into the nose is bad can also cause an allergic dermatitis, so obviously wear gloves whenever you're using this, and even a breathing mask, of course. The largest commercial use of this, of course, is in nickel plating, the same reason we're making it, and it's also used in nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride batteries, much like nickel chloride. In our materials, we're going to use nickel metal, 30 grams, 35% sulfuric acid, which is basically battery acid strength in the U.S. here, and I'll start with 170 milliliters, and we'll also use 30% hydrogen peroxide. I'm not going to mess around like I did with the nickel chloride. We'll go right to 30%, 50 milliliters to start. A couple of straightforward reactions here. Nickel, when mixed with sulfuric acid, will give you nickel sulfate, hexahydrate, and of course hydrogen gas, so that's something always to be alert to. And secondly, nickel plus sulfuric acid plus the hydrogen peroxide will give you nickel sulfate and water. And this is uh, great for breaking down the nickel, but it does not help in the end when you've got to get rid of that water. The hydrogen peroxide in particular helps the nickel go from a zero oxidative state to a plus two, meaning it's helping it actually pull the nickel ions off of the actual metal, which then combine with the sulfate negative two in solution. And of course it's neutral in that uh, situation. In our methods, very similar to the nickel uh, chloride. So nickel metal in a beaker, adding sulfuric acid. Again, this will be 35%. Be aware of the hydrogen that's uh, gonna be released with uh, heat. And as you add more of the sulfuric acid and the hydrogen peroxide, sometimes alternating, you need to do that with heat until everything dissolves. One quick comment, keep it under 70, 75 degrees C because of the uh, hydrogen peroxide. Once everything is dissolved, it's simply getting rid of the water as much as you can. Be careful not to overheat it above 100 C. Nickel sulfate, much like nickel chloride, starts to break down. So this will be a little bit on the slow side, but do it carefully. Then you want to take your solution, put it in your fridge or freezer, whichever works best. Wait for it to crystallize. Then you're going to end up filtering it, washing it. I'll probably do vacuum filtration on this uh, unless something else changes. Um, washing it and then, of course, drying it. Nickel sulfate hexahydrate is indeed... Um, hydrophilic, but you uh, don't have to be quite as careful as with the nickel chloride. It's not nearly as bad, so you want to watch the uh, you know humidity, but it's not that bad. Okay, that's it. Let's not breathe this into our schnoz here, but let's go make our nickel sulfate. 30 grams of nickel strips pre-weighed, which I plan on chopping into small pieces. Done chopping up 30 grams of those nickel strips. 170 milliliters of battery acid strength sulfuric acid, or 35%, pre-measured. 50 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide, pre-measured. I've got the 30 grams of chopped up nickel pieces here. This will be interesting because they're all magnetic, of course. The first order of business is to start adding 35% sulfuric acid here very slowly at first. But we know from the passivity layer that forms that even though we add it slow, it's not going to really react much until we get to the hydrogen peroxide. It's still good form to go slow. I also have a one liter beaker here because hydrogen bubbles are produced at some at points and at times that are very excessive and I certainly don't want this to bubble over. I've just added a thermometer to monitor the temperature. It's at around 32 degrees Celsius right now. I'm going to heat this up to 70 degrees Celsius or so. Uh, maybe a little more because the hydrogen peroxide is not part of our uh, operation right now and that is what we really need to keep the temperature low for. So I'm going to continue adding the sulfuric acid here as we monitor the temperature. All of the sulfuric acid has been added. That was 170 milliliters. We're at 75 degrees Celsius, which is good. I am going to attempt to turn on this magnetic stir and just see what happens here. Let's see when it spins, if it mixes. Well, that's interesting, but it is moving them around. So I'm going to leave them there. Some movement is better than no movement. Okay, I'm going to next start adding the hydrogen peroxide. I let it cool down from 75 to 70 degrees Celsius. Probably not a big deal, but I like keeping it around 70 when I'm adding hydrogen peroxide. Now this is 30%, so 
so we should expect some reaction. And this is also exothermic, of course. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's certainly more bubbles being formed, which is hydrogen down there as the passivity layer is kind of ripped away with the hydrogen peroxide. Okay, I'm going to keep adding this slowly. I'm stopping the slow addition of the hydrogen peroxide to just show you what happened. Uh, it's up to about 105 degrees Celsius. You can't help that. That's just because this is exothermic. What's happening right now. But you can see how aggressively the hydrogen peroxide worked. I added about at 50 here. We're down to 20. I about 30 milliliters of the 30% and let it sit. Didn't want to add any more. And eventually this happened maybe 10 minutes later. So you got to be careful. Okay, it's calmed down quite a bit. I will continue to add the hydrogen peroxide slowly. There's quite a bit of metal still. You kind of seen a darker area in the middle there. That's all still the metal chips. So I was able to start using the magnetic stir pretty aggressively there. Uh, the temperature right now is 76 degrees Celsius and I've added 80 milliliters uh, so far of the 30% hydrogen peroxide. I used up the, fill it, the 50, filled it again and used up another 30. So I'm going to turn off the magnetic stir here. Uh, it's hard to tell if there's any medical, metal particles in there anymore. So I'm going to let that die down. And this is simply a tube with a magnet stuck on the end that I coated so that acids don't get to the magnet, which is metal. Just want to see. Well, there's a magnetic stir. You can see it's got a few particles left of the uh, nickel. Oh yeah, there's quite a few left. All right, well, put this all back in there and keep doing this until it's all gone. All righty. So I'll turn back on the magnetic stir. Probably add the rest of that uh, 50, uh, I'm sorry, 30% hydrogen peroxide. And then I might add a little bit of the 35% sulfuric acid uh, if need be, just to balance out the hydrogen peroxide. But we'll see how that goes. I finished adding the second 50 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide. So that makes 100 milliliters so far. I took this magnet, you might have seen me during the time lapse, and put it on the side of the beaker there, and there are some very, very fine particles of the nickel still left in there, although it's a nice deep green, which is, of course, what we want to see. The temperature's at 70 degrees Celsius, so it's perfect. So I have a little bit of the 35% sulfuric acid right here, and I'm gonna just add it. Um, not all of it, there's 40 milliliters here, about probably 10 milliliters at a time, just to see if we can't get rid of that last tiny bit of the uh, nickel in there. Well, all of the nickel is finally dissolved. I ended up adding uh, another 30 milliliters of the 35% sulfuric acid and another 30 milliliters of the 30% hydrogen peroxide. And that finally did it. Everything's dissolved. We finally have a solution that is actually mostly water because the 35 and 30% of both of those leaves uh, 65 and 70% of water. So there's a lot of water in here. Plus the reaction itself produced water. So we've got to get rid of that water and I'm going to start doing that. Now, I just have to show you this real quick. I pulled the thermometer out now as I was getting ready to heat this to get rid of the water and stuck to the side of it. Look at that. Nickel sulfate crystals. I couldn't believe it. These must have formed at some point, uh, probably later on here. I'll just put them on my finger here. There you go. Kind of a preview of coming attractions. As I start to heat this, uh, I won't let it go above around 90, 95 degrees Celsius. Once you reach 100 degrees, again, you risk uh, breaking down some of the nickel sulfate. Uh, not a lot, but small amounts count, and so I don't want to do that. Um, and we'll just monitor this until we get down low enough that we start to see some crystals form, and then I'll chill it to room temperature and put it in the fridge. I had stopped the time lapse to put this in the fridge, but it took me 20 minutes or so to get back to this. I had a couple things to take care of inside the house. When I got back, back here, there are just a bunch of tiny crystals forming on the top, which is usually a good sign that it's time to chill it. So I'm going to do that. Uh, just so you know, the temperature is around 75 degrees C, which is, you know, good. That was a decent temperature. 
Uh, so it's not, the crystals aren't forming from uh, cooling down, they're forming because it's getting so concentrated. I've seen this before, in it goes. All right, I'll give that a couple hours at least. Been around four hours, so let's take a peek at this here. And it's really frosted. It's quite humid here where I'm at. Look at that. Now that fridge gets really cold, so some of that might be actually frozen, but I'm sure that there are crystals in there. So let's take a look at that a little closer when I can sit on a table. So there's a little bit of liquid around the edges you can see still, but um, oh wow, yeah, it's kind of slushy. Looks like there's actually a chunk in there that froze. But uh, anyways, yeah, mo most of this is definitely uh, nickel sulfate hexahydrate. Awesome, turned out really great. All right, let's go ahead and filter this. I might let it warm up just a touch more so I can break down all these pieces here. All right, ready to go here. What you see kind of sprayed in here is just distilled water to get the uh, filter paper to stick better down there. Let's go ahead and start filtering our nickel sulfate. I ran this a little longer than typically because I was afraid there might be frozen pieces in there, although I tried to break them down. And of course you want those to uh, melt also. So I think there were, as I pushed down on the spoon periodically, it, it compressed better and better, so that's good. Now I'm just gonna wash it briefly with some distilled water. This is extremely cold, it came out of the freezer. Not much, you don't, of course, want to do too much. Okay, I'll let that run through. And a second brief washing with 99% isopropyl alcohol. Nickel sulfate is not soluble in this at all, especially when it's cold, like this is. Both the water and the isopropyl alcohol have run through, so I'm gonna turn this off here. We'll scoop it out and we'll dry it. This little plate here just has some paper toweling and a couple of filter papers. I'm gonna start putting our nickel sulfate in here. This is uh, one of those things you do not, not want to heat uh, under any circumstances really because to heat and dry this means you release the water and in the end it just turns into mush. So we'll have to be patient and let this air dry. Done. It air dried overnight nicely so all we need to do now is Weigh it. Okay. 112.95 grams. Well, it bounced up to 113 grams, but 125 grams was a theoretical yield, so I'm going to go ahead here and let's figure this out. We take 113, nice, easy number, divided by 125. And we got 90.4, basically 90% yield, which we'll take, not too bad. Although we're pretty sure we know what we have, it's always fun to test things just to make sure the tests come out right also. So I'm gonna do two tests here, one for the nickel portion and one for the sulfate portion. So in each of these test tubes here, I put just a little bit of the nickel sulfate, and you can see that clearly in both of them. So I'm just gonna add about a two to three cc's of water here to dissolve them. All right, all of five minutes later and it's dissolved. And what I have here is just over-the-counter ammonia. Nothing special about it. But what this will do is complex it with the nickel. And when it does that, it'll produce kind of a purple violet color. So this is specifically to test for the nickel part of the nickel sulfate. And in goes the ammonia. And it's pretty clear. It's an easy test to do, pretty obvious, but definitely we've got nickel. For the sulfate test, I'm gonna use a very weak solution of barium nitrate here. And when you mix barium nitrate with nickel sulfate, the sulfate combines with the barium to produce barium sulfate, which is an insoluble, kind of a white to whitish yellow complex. So let's do that in this test tube right here. In goes the barium nitrate. 
clearly you can see there's sulfate in here. Okay, we did it. We proved we have nickel sulfate.